University's Center for Psychiatric Rehabilitation's goal is to connect our viewers with supportive resources in the community and to help individuals enhance their career development and overall well-being. Everyone can be successful with the right support. Good afternoon, my name is Kim Bissett. Welcome to Employment for All, where everyone can be successful with the right supports. We'd like to welcome our guests today, uh, Chandra Watts and Mary Viano. You guys are from PAL, which is Parents Professional Advocacy League, as well as representing Youth Move. Yes. We're very, Youth Move of Massachusetts. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that distinction. Um, so let's start off as we always do here on Employment with, for All with yeah. Tell Me About Yourself. So um, I am a parent of three teenagers, um, ranging from the ages of 17 to 13. Um, all of my children have special health care needs, um, but also are connected to the behavioral health and mental health component. Um, my daughter, who is 13, has um, developmental delay and Down syndrome, and she's medically fragile. Um, and I've really kind of worked on advocating for all of them, but really have worked um, and come to PAL to work on the mental health component. Great. Fantastic. Uh, Shandra, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. I am the lead youth advocate from Youth Move Massachusetts. I am a young adult with lived experience. Great. And we're happy to have you both here. So let's talk a little bit about, Mary, will you tell us about PAL? So PAL, um, as you had mentioned, Kim stands for the Parent Professional Advocacy League. And we are a statewide program, and we're a family organization. So unlike most agencies, um, family organization, we really are families. When you call, we're parents, we're siblings. Um, we identify ourselves possibly with having a mental health or an emotional or behavioral need. Um, and we could also have parents that have mental health needs. Um, so when you call in, you're going to always reach that family to family connection, the first thing. The second thing is, is we're a statewide program that focuses specifically and really um, tunes in on children with emotional, behavioral, mental health needs. And we're the only family organization in Massachusetts that does that. Right, and that's a very key issue when someone calls up and they know that someone's behind them with that family to family network that they say, wow, this person has that understanding. They're not going to make kind of outlandish comments or, or really come at it from left field. They're coming at it from a real lived experience, a real credibility piece, which is a huge support for families. And it is that piece where we say, you're not alone. Yes. There is a piece of, we've walked through your shoes, and if we didn't, there's someone within our network that has. So making that parent-to-parent -parent connection, which is a huge piece. That is a very huge piece. And the similar piece goes for Youth Move. Can you tell us a little bit about Youth Move of sure. Massachusetts? Youth Move Massachusetts is a chapter of Youth Move, Ma youth Move National, excuse me, and we are a diverse group of youth, and I mean not just culturally, like from all walks of life, um, services, no services, GLBTQ, straight, just all walks of life, and um, you can kind of see if it, see us kind of as um, change agents, and we're dedicated to making a change in the way people see not only mental health and stigma, but the judicial system and um, foster care, what happens after foster care as well, too, so. Wow, so you're really on kind of all levels of trying to influence how people are better served um, and enhance the services in the systems of care. Yes. Fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about, Chandra, your role in Youth Move. What specifically are you working on? Sure. Um, as previously said, I'm the lead youth advocate from Youth Move Massachusetts. And right now I've been working on a few different things. And um, right now youth groups working on, on a grant that we are kind of a part of through Stay Together and SAMHSA. Um, just kind of trying to come up with um, youth advisory groups right now. So that's a very big key in, to what I'm doing. So. Okay, great. Can you define um, youth advisory groups? Can you tell us what they, what they are? Youth advisory groups, we're working on three right now to get um, a group of youth together in three different communities to kind of come together and talk about the resources that they need immediately in their area. Great. And the other thing, just to build on what Chandra is saying as well, is there is a piece of the youth advisory groups that we're not only looking at diversity, but really looking at what the peers themselves are saying their community is lacking. So are there some resources? Are there transportation issues? Exactly. Um, are there some challenges maybe within, there's not an after school program, there's not groups to go to. Um, and then the flip side is really to teach the professionalism and the leadership that Chandra has really um, risen to the occasion in both PAL and Youth Move as the lead youth advocate. So that Chandra really 
has not only the lived experience, but she has a piece of leadership development and professionalism, like we would all in our jobs. Um, and she's really kind of risen to that occasion where um, she's a spokesperson for youth. Right, and that's a key critical component, because when you say you want to get youth involved, you want to have youth at the table, and youth are so much likely to a, show up, but B, participate when they say, okay, right. well, we see Chandra there, and she's uh, a seasoned professional, and she's there to help us represent our voice, because sometimes young adults, it's so intimidating. You've got right. all these other people there, and you're like, well, oh, how can I really say what I really think? But if they watch, and they kind of see that, wow, Chandra's moved through the system, and she understands how to advocate for herself, she can help advocate for us. Right. And that's a beautiful bridge. It's very much your peer mentor and, and helping people. We've all, everyone who I've known who's been very successful has had a mentor, someone there who's been there, done that, or pieces of it, and been able to kind of say to someone, hey, this is how you could do this differently, or hey, have you thought about this? Um, you know, and that's a very critical piece. I think that's very important. Um, and that's similar to uh, PAL in terms of their parent professionals. Would you t talk a little bit about that, Mary? Sure. So we, um, one of the things that we have done really well in is kind of this parent movement. Um, CBHI, the Children's Behavioral Health Initiative, which the rollout began three years ago in Massachusetts as a statewide approach, employed um, parent partners or family partners. You'll hear that kind of title across Massachusetts a lot now and we have over 400 right now family partners that Fantastic. are have lived experience um, have walked in the shoes in raising a, a child or have been a caregiver to someone that has emotional behavioral or mental health needs in the next year we're looking at another 300 being wow. um, employed within residential care so looking at um, family partners in residentials connected to multiple systems so the Department of Children and Families and the Department of Mental Health are really moving forward together to try to support that and our goal from a, from a parent organization, PAL, or a family organization, is really to continue that effort. Um, but I notice, and Chandra and I have many conversations with the young adults, that the youth themselves and the young adults themselves are, push, are pushing this movement. Um, so it really is about a network. Um, as you know, and, and we've talked many times, um, there's, it's really important to get a, a lot of voices at the table. So that network and those bran that branch. Um, Massachusetts is a large state. So what Western Mass possibly needs, Boston doesn't maybe need. Right. So be able to kind of expand. But it is interesting with the themes with parents. They've always talked about access for care, um, talked about how to navigate the maze, um, that services don't find them. You need to find the supports to keep your kids at home. Um, would not be for kids to go into residential. Um, I am a parent that has had a child in residential, but that wasn't the goal. So to really find the services and supports before. Absolutely. And the goal here at Employment for All is that everyone can be successful with the right supports. And we know that when you find the right supports and you combine them with other supports, the level of recovery or the level of accomplishment is uh, really, really dramatically increased. There's a kind of synergy that happens when you're able to connect with the, the right resources at the right time in the right way, and then it lifts everyone up. So you guys are uh, a tremendous resource in being able to help that really move forward. Can you talk about, Chandra, a little bit about why a peer mentor is so important? Why this piece of support for young adults in a tra traditionally underserved population, um, the age range that you guys are focusing on, sure. is traditionally underserved? And can you tell about why it's so critical? Well, kind of to kind of give you an overview, I was um, a youth who had significant mental health needs. And I didn't have that kind of support when I was younger. It would have been very beneficial for me to see you know, somebody older, somebody who had you know, gone through what I'd been through. I think that um, along with the support of my parents and also PAL, um, seeing that would have been great. Um, so when we talk about peer mentors, um, you know, it's really important to have them, I think, everywhere um, just because they've walked through, you know, the same shoes that a lot of the youth are going through now. and to see um, somebody kind of make it through to the other side is very inspirational. Absolutely. It provides that level of hope when you can right. see it. Uh, one of my favorite examples is Roger Bannister. Um, everyone said the four minute mile could never be done. No one can physically do it. And then he did it. Right. Um, and there's a little controversy. Was he the first person in the world? But he was certainly the first person um, that, that most people recognize as the first person. Right. And once he did it, then so many other people did it within that year. And it couldn't be done to so many people and it's seeing it and that's why I think having a lot of people come out and as people with lived experience and sharing their success strategies there are different strategies coping right. strategies 
uh, strategies in school, well-being, fitness strategies that can help people really move forward in their recovery um, and help boost their resiliency. It's kind of like, oh, they've been through it and, you know, they're successful and they're living a pretty good life. I can do that too. Absolutely. You can mm -hmm. see it. Um, right. I started working with young adults with psychiatric disabilities many, many years ago. And one of the best things I did is I brought in a young man who had mental health issues. And he was, I'll never forget, he was like a manager at a Best Buy and he had his own apartment and he had a girlfriend. Well, he came in and talked to my youth and they all referenced that. No matter the great curriculum I had or the other guest speakers, you know, experts in the field came in, but this young man had what most of the young adults want, a partner, a place to live on their own and a cool job. They saw his job as kind of a tech job, but they're like, wow, I could recover. And then I got so many more young adults knocking on my door. I want a job. Hey, how did that guy meet that girl? Um, you know, like, how do I interact more in the community? And that's when I started to see the power. And, some, and I had looked out for supports when I came into the field, and people said, bring in people who have this lived experience. And then I realized, wow, the power of that. And I think he propelled a lot of people further in the recovery than, than any curriculum that we had. And of course, that supported it. But then I brought in many, many more young adults. And it was a tremendously successful program because the people who were in the shoes, as you mentioned, helped actually people keep their steps going forward and more forward. Right. So it's a really positive, positive thing. And it's very interesting to me that um, the mental health field came to it so much later. Mm -hmm. So many other fields embrace the embrace that level of recovery and that level of kind of support so much sooner. Well, that's why, you know, doing this is really important to me because in the mental health field, a lot of people don't understand it because they don't know it. Yes. So the more that we can, you know, try to get people to understand it, education is key and it's really all there is to it. Right, especially. I think yeah, just absolutely. to add to that, I think with Youth Move Massachusetts, the diversity um, that Chandra was talking about, the types of youth, youth that come to, youth and young adults that come to our groups, um, right now we have four groups that are going on in the Worcester area and we're outreaching to other communities with these youth advisory groups. Um, but we have very diverse walks of life. So we have um, the young adult that is on the National Honor Society but may be experiencing low self-esteem and, yeah. and anxiety. Um, we have youth that are coming from locked hospital programs that are coming in and are able to stay within the youth groups. We also have many residentials that also have um, children that are staying in their treatment and care and are coming to group with no supervision. So to be able to look at the diversity, it can be from different schools, different hats, different things that you're wearing, but it really is about kind of meet me where I'm yes. at. And it doesn't matter kind of who, what pedestal you've put me on because there's no pedestal. It's kind of everybody's the same. Um, and often we talk about the bullying issues as well, yes. that sometimes the bullying issues do come up and it doesn't matter if you're the National Honor Society um, individual yeah. or you're the individual that has five different colors, hair, and ten piercings. Yeah. That it really is kind of meeting wherever that individual um, need is. And I think that's been one of the, the best pieces of Youth Move Massachusetts is not only to be given a national um, award as the chapter, um, which um, Chandra was co-author and co-founder of Youth Move Massachusetts. Fantastic. But it really was this next step of um, we're connecting nationally, but we're also, we're kind of um, putting a standard, I think, in Massachusetts to listen to young people. Yes. So just, again, to ask. Um, and many of the t things that we have done, um, and I can think of one young man in particular that was 14 years old and said um, in his school, he was in a therapeutic program, and he said, when I go into the room and I see that door up, that seclusion door, it reminds me of a psychiatric hospital. Wow. Um, and if, again, you look at the developmental delay, yeah. kind of that movement, it, the movement for developmental delay advocacy was in the 50s and 60s, and it really flew in the 70s. Yes. For mental health, it wasn't until the 80s yeah. that we even recognized that people don't need to live in institutions. Yes. So right. again, looking at the resiliency and that people, you know, I have anxiety. I'm always going to live with anxiety. Yes. How do I deal with it? Right. So I think those pieces as well from the peer-to-peer -peer model work extremely well. Right, and I think the community piece is huge. I know PAL does a fantastic job. I've talked to many young adults of you're coming from uh, a place with more supervision, whether it be a hospital or whether it be a residential, and how do you live in the community and just seeing right. other young adults that are doing it well. Right. You want to talk a little bit about that, Chandra? Sure. Um, having, you know, a diverse group of youth coming in to meet together is really refreshing, especially when you're coming from a locked unit because you get to see youth living in the community and they're like, well, if they can do it, and if they can come out and do this, I, I can do this. And it 
we've seen a lot of um, youth transition out and do really well just because, not just because of PAL and youth move, but I think it's a great help because it's great practice also to get out into the community. Right, and you can see it when you see people right. doing it. How did you save up to buy a car? How did you negotiate to right. buy a car? How do you cook? I know I learned to cook living with people, and I'd say, right. oh, you're making chicken piccata? I don't know how to do it. <laughs> but you'd sit with them, and they'd say, oh, I pound the chicken, and I get the capers, right. and I put it together. And when you see it being done, you're like, oh, it's not brain surgery. I could do it, too. Right. But if you're just looking, I'm not a big recipe person, so if I just look at a recipe, I'm that much more intimidated and much right. more less likely to make something else. But if I sit with someone and make it, then you can do it so much more easily. So it's, it's kind of, that's the recipe, is yeah. having the young adults see, well, this person first moved down on their own, then maybe yeah. they got a car, then maybe they got a job, and helping people do that piece. Right. And then also simultaneously, I think, for the providers to see some of the best work that I think PAL has done and a lot of the different uh, places have done is to show, showcase people in recovery and people that have that, young adults with lived experience or youth that have that resiliency so that the providers see that wow, recovery is happen happening and there is a great deal of resiliency. So that even though sometimes you might be working with a young adult in crisis or a youth in crisis, life can get better and it does and here are these young people that are doing fantastically well. So I think that's a critical piece of all the work that we're doing as well. Right. Um, and can you talk about a little bit how PAL does that because they really help prepare youth to be best received by some of the providers, some of the systems, which I think is key um, in a lot of the leadership development that you do. So it is interesting because prior to um, to my position at PAL, Chandra is actually connected to PAL first as a young adult where her parents were getting support, but also with the group called The Others. Um, and the group The Others was a 10-year-long um, youth group that actually did some PSAs, did some stigma busting, wow. really kind of kind of came to that next right. level. Um, and from there, we, we bridged in um, that first group, which was HOPE, Helping Others Promote Equality. Uh -huh. um, and from there, we just, it, it grew. Um, and I think as, as, it, as it has grown, I think the biggest piece that the youth are, themselves are saying is, number one, they want to run the agenda. Um, number two, they want to be heard. And if they have a bad day, they can still come to the group. Yes. So there is this peer-to-peer -peer model. A lot of times, if you're not acting this way and you're not doing these things, um, you are kind of, a lot of things are taken away. Uh -huh. And I know even as a mom, it was a struggle for me sometimes when challenges were happening, you know, not to take away the kid, the, the, what the item is it that, that my child liked the most. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you thought, well, if I took away the cell phone or if I take away the video games, all the behaviors will go away. Well, not if you have mental health needs, the anxiety mm -hmm. is still there, the depression yeah. still there. And for my kids, there's a level of trauma as well. So um, post-traumatic stress syndrome um, is also a piece of our life. So I think, again, that's a, that's a real fragile piece to be able to balance yes. and to say that you still are a good kid and you deserve to do the next step. Yes. Um, so I think when, when you're asking the question, too, about when the youth do come into PAL, I think it's a connection, one, of acceptance or youth move. Yeah. Um, Youth Move Massachusetts has received funding from the uh, Massachusetts Behavioral Partnership um, Healthcare Plan and MBHP, and they've been a huge supporter um, of kind of what we've done. Um, the Department of Mental Health has also been a great supporter as well, and we have really looked at, again, trying to connect youth to these groups. We don't take insurance. We do not take any money for these groups, wow. and they're free, and you have to fall. There's no kind of... Um, application process or intake where you have to have all of these different things. As you know with the stigma of mental health and Chandra talks often about as well, um, there are many individuals out there that do not have diagnoses. And you don't need to go find a label to come to our group. Right. Right. Let that me is, check off the right goal. box so they'll accept me. And then the tricky part is if you do get that diagnosis and you check off that box, it follows you. Mm -hmm. So that's the scary piece. So being able to just walk in the door and say, hey, I want to be part of this and you don't need the, the diagnosis or the exact criteria to be part of it. And I think really our goal um, and my connection to Youth Move Massachusetts from my teenagers is another group started because I have two boys and they didn't want to be in the same group, so we need to start another group. Well, that, that next group had 20 plus members in less than a month. So really looking at, wow. again, kind of there is the need. And when you had talked about, Kim, I think the a really big piece of this is this is the age group that falls in the gray area yes. many times. There's not the services, there's not the supports. Um, and I really, I, again, looking at kind of Chandra's experience in teaching me as well, when you do get to an age um, where you're graduating from school, 
there's sometimes this lag time where you don't know where to go. Maybe yes. you haven't been taught the skills exactly. to do the next step. Right. Exactly. I don't know if you want to add to that. Well, just speaking from my experience, when I graduated high school, I went to an alternative high school for students who kind of needed more one-on-one -on -one attention for emotional disorders. And um, so I graduate high school, and I'm like, I didn't learn anything that is going to teach me how to go to college or get a job. Wow. So I, I just I had no idea where to go and what to do. And you know, through my supports, it took quite a lot of time, but. I, I'm getting there still. It's just it's it's a hike, but you know, with the supports, I'm able to do it. Right, and you need those practical skills. Right. I often teach providers right. about kind of how to teach a resume, how to teach a cover letter. And I was just right. with a group of four professionals. I think two had masters and two were working towards a masters, and they were like, "This is a fantastic curriculum. It just says resume, cover letter, how to prepare for an interview." Uh, you know, how to follow up after an interview, and they were like, this should be taught in public schools. Why be. isn't it? And, and those are the resources that we're providing through a lot of the funding of Department of Mental Health is to get those resources out there. And they should be for every young adult to say, okay, mm -hmm. how do you put together, how do you put together a good application? Right. How do you do networking? We were kidding about socks mm -hmm. earlier. How do you do an informational interview, which on Employment for All we talk a lot about is um, reaching out to someone to say, what do you do for a job? It looks like you're enjoy your job, you're a school adjustment counselor, what is that? And yep. how do you, how'd you get to that? And what's the education required? Um, and just a lot of young adults do not, a lot of people don't know, but particularly young adults who haven't had the support and the mentors, yeah, um, exactly. that's a big piece of what we're doing. And I think that's gonna be a critical piece as we start to continue, start, continue to partner with PAL about how do we help the young adults access more of those career development resources. Exactly. So I think that's a key piece because I think you guys do an incredible job of the life skills supports. Um, and I think there are in some of your other groups. Can we mention a few of the other groups? I know you talked about HOPE. Sure. So we have you. Um, you are one of us. We also have TEMA, which is a writing bureau. Um, so they have actually um, connected to their own group that really um, writes their own stories and are able to practice kind of their story and be able to, to work on a panel. Um, and they actually got an, an offer from um, Worcester State University and recently spoke and got paid for by the university cool. to speak on a panel mm -hmm. about mental health, their journey, and also to talk about the stigma, that we can talk about things and it's okay and just be able to accept that next level. Fantastic. fantastic. And the, the last group that we do have is called Yaya, which is the Young um, Adult Youth Advocacy Group. And they have speakers coming in not only to talk about the life skills, but also the social skills. Right. So trying to figure out people, like it's really hard to figure out friendships and figure out that next step. So the youth and the young adults themselves create who's coming in for speakers. So whether it's somebody coming in from the bank to somebody talking about healthy relationships, wow. what skills right. do they want to be able to get to that next step? Wow, that's fantastic. So it's really youth driven throughout to figure out kind of what the youth want and how do you help them to get there? Because if you don't have any structure, well, people can't be, you, you can't have no structure because people don't know, well, you can't, young adult can't create a curriculum and you, they don't have the networks to reach out, but it's how do you support them in helping them become. So it's kind of um, how do you partner with them to help it become youth driven? Right. That's fantastic. Great. And we, we did receive um, one of our, our best accomplishments, I think, for Youth Move Massachusetts is last summer, um, the youth and young adults were trained in strategic sharing, which is an Annie Casey Foundation um, curriculum. Right. And that was outstanding because it was, it was the first time that youth in Massachusetts and the Commonwealth were taught um, how to speak as professionals, how to really deal with their trauma. So if they're asked a really tough question, even as an adult, if I'm asked a question, how do you answer that or not answer that? Um, and and strategic sharing is, is a wonderful curriculum. Um, Chandra's going to be probably coming to uh, train the trainer for that as Fantastic. well with young adults. So that's something that we're really proud of and looking forward to connecting both foster care alumni and foster care youth that are, that are going to be aging out with no families and young adults that have lived experience. Great. So speaking of strategic sharing, we have to share that we need to uh, wrap up today. So we'd just love to give you a website and your phone number at PAL. So if people had further questions, we'd love them people to continue to reach out and continue the discussion. Mary, if you could Great. tell us the website, and then we'll have Chandra tell us the PAL phone number. Sure. So the website is ppal.net. And our phone number is 508-767-9725. Thank you guys very Great. much. Thank, Thank you, you to Mary. Thank you to Chandra for being on the show. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to having more people from PAL and Youth Move on in the future.
And I'd also like to say thank you very much to our audience for tuning in once again to Employment for All, where we feel that everyone can be successful with the right supports. We'd like you to look out for that person who just might be in need of that special attention or extra support to help them reach their full potential. And I'd like to say thank you to the Department of Mental Health for helping support us to help us be the best show that we can be. This is Kim Bissett saying have a wonderful afternoon.